morning, everyone. Wednesday, February the 13th. Nick Conrad at breakfast on BBC Radio Norfolk. Uh, let's look again at our top story. Protesters that shut down County Hall during a meeting on Monday A warning they won't stop until an emergency on climate change is declared. 25 Extinction Rebellion campaigners staged a sit-in during Norfolk County Council's budget meeting, delaying it for four hours. Uh, it was over plans for a new road west of Norwich to connect the A47 to the NDR, which will run through the Wensum Valley. Four campaigners were arrested and removed from the chamber. Earlier, I spoke to the Conservative councillor, Brian Long, leader of Kings Lynn and West Norfolk Borough Council, who was at the meeting. Obviously, we've seen protests and demonstrations over various different subjects at County Hall over the years, but never have we had the situation where proceedings couldn't commence even properly for four hours. They've had their chance democratically to make their points about the problems with climate change, which people do appreciate is real. Councils are doing things to prevent. They, they had the chance to make that point in a, in a normal democratic fashion, but instead they chose to join a group where they're going to disrupt democratic procedures. That doesn't do anything to instill their message to me. Let's speak now to a supporter of Extinction Rebellion, UEA philosopher and Green Party activist Rupert Reid. Rupert, good morning to you. You say you're putting councils on notice. What do you mean by that? Good morning, Nick. Well, what we mean is that any council which doesn't declare a climate emergency and doesn't act in a way which makes it clear that they believe that there really is an emergency, in other words, for example, uh, any council that continues to support a disastrous road project such as the Wensum Valley Link, that this is the kind of thing that they can expect. Uh, and if councils want a, uh, an easy life, uh, then they need to do the right thing. They need to declare a climate emergency and they need to act accordingly. They need to act with the interests of our children at heart. Right. Because this is an absolutely existential crisis, Nick. There's no getting away from it now. What, what Councillor Long just said just then is hopelessly uh, inadequate. We need, to, we need to change everything and we need to change it now. Uh, and we in Extinction Rebellion are there to make sure that that happens. You're calling for an emergency to, to be declared, but there might be some people who would say it's a, it's a catchy title. It'll get people thinking for a short period of time, but action won't follow. So they would say, well, judge us on our actions. And there's councils this morning in Norfolk who are saying, actually, we are doing stuff in this area. Well, absolutely. We're quite happy to judge councils by their actions. As I just said, it's obviously not enough to declare a climate emergency. We need deeds as well, not just words, we need deeds. So in terms of what councils are doing around North, well, of course, councils are doing um, some good things. For example, some renewable energy has been put in here and there. Uh, councils have tried to do their bit on, uh, on waste. Uh, but it's nowhere near enough. What the UN tells us, Nick, as you probably know, is that by 2030, we need to half our carbon emissions. And in fact, in this country, we probably need to do way more than that because that halving is, needs to be what happens worldwide. Now, that is an absolute step change. That is a huge, huge change. No council in Norfolk is doing anywhere near that. And in particular, Norfolk County Council, which supported by the district councils, shamefully, wants to build this new road, is thereby planning to increase carbon emissions further at the very time we need to savagely reduce them. This just doesn't add up. And we are here to say, this will not stand. We must change direction. Anyone who cares about the future, anyone who cares about their children, anyone who cares about themselves, Nick, needs to get, on, get with the programme now on this. How will you escalate the action? How far will you go to get people to listen? So Extinction Rebellion is a completely non-violent uh, movement. We believe in non-violent direct action where necessary to tackle urgent, grave uh, problems which our democracy is, such as it is, is failing on. Just to go back to that point about uh, democracy, I think a lot of listeners will agree with me when I say democracy, what democracy? We live in a system which operates by first past the post, a completely outdated, undemocratic uh, system. And we live in a system which is hopelessly short-termist, which doesn't take into account the interests of children, the interests of unborn future generations. We need to find some way of including their interests in our democracy. So until that happens, Extinction Rebellion is here to say we will take nonviolent direct action of a similar nature, but 
it could be anything of of, of a non-violent right. nature um, to ensure that uh, councils do the right thing. Now, obviously, okay. I'm not going to say exactly what our future plans are on, on the radio here this morning, um, but uh, but you can rest assured that they will always be non-violent. Well, you mentioned democracy, but we have local elections on every council in Norfolk in May. So are you mm. going to put candidates into all of these elections? No, Extinction Rebellion is not a political uh, party. It contains people from all political parties and no political uh, uh, party. So there were Greens at the demonstration on Monday. There were also people from Labour. There were also people from uh, <clears throat> from no party at all. Um, Extinction Rebellion is here to put pressure onto uh, everybody and to ask everybody to do the right thing, to come together at this crucial point in human history and ensure that we take right. a different path a path that will be compatible with us continuing to live something like the kind of life that we currently live. But you, you, you don't you make that change. You clearly, feel, you clearly feel very strongly about this, as do the supporters, to the point yeah. that you're happy to disrupt a meeting and potentially um, be arrested. So I put to yeah. you that, that the best thing would be to form some kind of political movement to stand or do it through a vehicle such as the Green Party to represent the populace and to put these ideas forward in an arena where you can make a difference? So the <clears throat> Green Party already exists and will be standing uh, candidates uh, uh, in the elections. And obviously, uh, I'm a Green and I hope the Greens do fantastically well at this year's uh, elections. But this is beyond party politics, Nick. This is about everybody should be getting onto the page with this. This is an emergency. And also, I think it's fair to say that the political route has been tried. Uh, the normal democratic route has been tried. Uh, and we don't have time, right? In 12 years, we have to reduce our carbon emissions by half worldwide, which means we have to reduce them far more than that in this country. We in Extinction Rebellion believe that we need to, in fact, reduce them to zero in this country by 2025. That's an absolutely eye-watering target. We don't have time for the normal processes, which, as I say, are, are desperately badly okay. flawed anyway. First past the post has a huge bias in it against any new party. Because unless you can get into a contention as one of the top two, people always say, oh, it's a wasted vote, I'm going to vote tactically, etc. Our system is not democratic. Our system does not include future people. Our system is failing. And that's why it's legitimate to take uh, nonviolent direct action. The, the council may say, um, and there are commentators who've come on this morning who have said, that what they want from you guys is to hit them explicitly with a list of your, not demands, but thoughts and what can happen to practically try and reduce carbon emissions across Norfolk. Uh, and they're talking about everyday things through to maybe some of the bigger projects like the NDR. They they feel, uh, from, from one individual this morning that I spoke to, Alexandra Kemp, that that would be a more practical way about going about bringing around change and at least would give councillors ideas rather than just... Uh, uh, hiding behind a catchy title like declaring um, a, a climate emergency? Well, I was very happy to uh, to hear those kinds of words from uh, Councillor Kemp and from others. And, and this kind of response, to be frank, is exactly the kind of thing that, in that regard at least, Extinction Rebellion was hoping for. We are very happy to uh, to talk with people and present to them our ideas, our demands. And we have very, very concrete ideas. The declaration of a climate emergency is just one part of a much broader set of ideas. So another of our demands is we want people to tell the truth. We want people to tell the truth about the emergency uh, that we are facing. That includes the, uh, the media as well. Another demand is that we want to have a citizens assembly. Uh, and in Norfolk, that should operate at the Norfolk level and also at more local levels. A citizens assembly, uh, additional to existing so-called democratic structures, whereby people picked from the ordinary population, like in a, in a jury, which is part of our democratic system, picked from the local population would get together to, to consult and deliberate on what kinds of things we need to do to try to prevent dangerous climate change from escalating further and to try to adapt to it locally here in Norfolk. Now, what are these kind of things going to translate to in concrete terms? So let me give you a few examples, Nick. So the first thing is that you would not be building a new road across the Winsome Valley. That is just categorical. Secondly, there are big implications in terms of uh, housing as well. The housing stock that we're building across Norfolk at the moment is absolutely, hopelessly 
inadequate to the future that we're facing. Every new house should have renewable energy built into it. Every new building should have renewable energy uh, built into it. Thirdly, as I say, there are implications in terms of adaptation. We need to be thinking far more carefully about where we build houses, about uh, where we build any uh, infrastructure. Uh, Great Yarmouth, for example, is highly vulnerable to the, to the deadly sea level rise that is going to be coming over the next uh, generation or two. We need to be thinking now about acting on that, not kind of pretending or hoping that it's not going to happen. It is going to okay. happen. We are committed to a worsening situation for some time to come because of the tragic level of inaction so far and the time lag okay. built into the system. R R Rupert, can I ask you to do something alongside uh, the others who lead Extinction Rebellion? Um, and I'm not entirely sure if there is a leader or, or, or how um, how the group is, is is formed. But what I would like to receive from you guys is a, a document about the points that you think Norfolk as a county could look to to try and help reduce our carbon footprint and some practical mm -hmm. yeah. solutions that, that aren't really waffly and big, but are actually, you know, the, the nuts and the bolts. And I know this is something that you, you spend a lot of time on, but the nuts and the bolts, the real things that we can do. And I think we should sit down in the studio and we should go through them one by one and interrogate them and have a look at them and see if they are possible or not or where there might be blocks. And I think that's an exercise that would be really interesting for the wider public to engage in. So we talk about using uh, forums for debate. Well, let's use this forum for a debate. Uh, but I'd like to see that document in advance with those concrete proposals put forward so we can really have a look at it and we can try and stress test it to see if it would work. Is that something that we can do? We can absolutely do that. Uh, just one little point of, uh, of correction to what you just said, Nick. Um, yeah, our proposals certainly won't be waffly, but they will be big because big proposals are what we now need. We need yeah, to transform yeah. our transport systems, our housing systems, everything. But yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a super invitation. We'll be delighted to, uh, to take that up. And as you already implied, to hopefully share that uh, with uh, uh, councillors around uh, the region and so on and so forth. OK, Rupert, good to have you on as ever. Thank you for that. Rupert Reed there, uh, who is a supporter of Extinction Rebellion, a UEA philosopher and Green Party activist.